FlyQuest just utterly humiliated Cloud9, and it was not close at all. You know, I came into this series, I think with most people, thinking that C9 would win, maybe in a close series, but they would look like the better team. And that was the complete opposite case. Cloud9 did 2-0 FlyQuest in the regular season, and I think that's why a lot of people had them predicted to win the series, but FlyQuest, through all four games today, were just the better team. Even in game one, which Cloud9 won, they had a huge lead and they ended up throwing it. Yes, the onus should be put on Vulcan for that as he overextended in red side jungle and kind of baited his team in to throw the game. But they were able to overcome that throw and eventually come back and win that game, barely, with a half HP Nexus. Now, if you look at every single phase of the game, from draft, to itemization, to actual player execution, to individual mechanics and team play, FlyQuest was just better at every single point in the series. And really, it wasn't close. If we go lane by lane, all four games in top lane was a Cassante Renekton matchup. Both of the players had their moments, Cassante got a couple solo kills, Thanatos being the Cassante did get a solo kill, uh, Whippo played probably better in team fights and with his team. Both of them were kind of just there, but neither of them really made a huge impact, but I definitely would have given the edge to Whippo overall, just because his team fighting is very, very good. In terms of the jungle, uh, Inspired played three games of Ivern, Blabber played three games of Lilia and one of Amumu. And in mid lane, Jojo Pune played four games of Corky. Now, just in terms of those champion picks, when you have four games of Cassante, four games of uh, Corky and three games of Lilia, this in and of itself is completely skewed and completely game ruining and series losing for Cloud9. When you lose a game, even two games in a best of five, you have to change things up. You cannot be picking the same things every single game and expecting different outcomes. That literally is the definition of insanity. But they continue to do it. They picked Cassante four games in a row. They picked Corky four games in a row. They picked Lilia three games out of four. And it was just, it's humiliating. If you're a Cloud9 fan, you should be embarrassed for this team. They performed horribly in every single phase. The drafts were awful. And the best of, fi best of fives, especially in draft, are all about adaptation and finding new ways to catch your opponent off guard in terms of champion picks. And I think FlyQuest did a great job of that. Sure, they picked four straight games of Renekton, but that was just because Cloud9 picked four straight games of Cassante. It's a neutralizing matchup. Both of them are pretty useless champions, but Whippo just had better team play, so he looked more useful. But in terms of draft diversity, they had Ivern picks. They had the Jarvan Oriana uh, in the last game. Uh, Masu played well on the Ash, played well on the Jin, and Busio also looked quite good today. I haven't been super high on Busio, uh, as long as he's been in the league, but today he looked very good, and he definitely outperformed Vulcan. If you just go down the list of players, Bwipo gapped Thanatos in terms of macro and team play, Inspired gapped Blabber, uh, Quad hard, I think mid lane was the hardest gap by far, Quad absolutely giga stomped Jojo in every single game. Jojo just kind of looked invisible this series and had a couple really crappy int moments. He did absolutely nothing. Uh, ADC was pretty even, Berserker definitely had some moments and was definitely trying. I think he was probably the best performing member on C9 today, uh, but Masu played really, really well. And then Busio hard gapped the Vulcan, and I just think, you know, it's completely acceptable to think that maybe Cloud9 just had an off day and, you know, better luck next time. But the fact of the matter is, they had a bye week. They were the second seed, they had the first week of playoffs off. And this is what you have to show for yourself after a week, an extra week of prep for FlyQuest. And this is the performance you put forward. It's embarrassing. It's truly embarrassing. And uh, I'm 100% of the opinion now. I was already mostly there, but now I'm 100% there of the opinion that having a bye week in playoffs is actually bad for your team. I think that uh, especially when Cloud9 was 6-1 in the regular season, was on a really good streak, looking really strong at the end of the regular season, and then they just have a week off, and you kind of kill your momentum at that point as a team, uh, and you kind of try to have to stay 
stay warm, so to speak, and, and stay kind of in the flow of things, even with a week off. It can get pretty rough for your team coming back, uh, looking pretty flat like Cloud9 did today. So there are a lot of, you know, uh, tertiary reasons for why Cloud9 looked as bad as they did today, but straight up, they just got team gapped, and they got coach gapped, they got player gapped, every single aspect of the game. If you just go by itemization, look in the last game, Masu on Ash, goes Kraken Slayer, PD, Infinity Edge. Fantastic Ash itemization. Uh, and I think it was game th two or game three when he played Jin. He went Collector into a Last Whisper item into Eye Edge. That's what it should be on Jin. None of the Static Shiv crap. Uh, quad on Azir going Nashers, Leandries, Void Staff, Rabadons, doing damage, really playing to the champion's strengths and hard carrying the game. Really, really good stuff. Even inspired on, on the Ivern, uh, building obviously the core two of Redemption and Moonstone, but having the Mikhail's for hard CC, uh, like a Moomoo and Lilia sleeps, um, and then uh, having the Dawn Core fourth on Ivern is really good. You know, FlyQuest just played really well today in every facet of the game. Uh, Macro-wise and micro-wise, they just looked really good. And I have to say I'm impressed because this team was pretty up and down, even though they finished third and five and two in the regular season, they were pretty inconsistent uh, in the regular season and Cloud9 really smoked them in their best of three. But, uh, you know, whether or not it was a bad day from C9, a good day from FlyQuest or a combination of both, uh, it was embarrassing to watch this series. Even in game one where Cloud9 won, they really should have lost the game and they didn't play very well uh, past that 20 minute mark when they really threw the game. And so overall, FlyQuest just looked like the better team by far and away and it wasn't close. So Cloud9 definitely has some work to do before next week. Uh, whether they're playing 100 Thieves or Dignitas, if they play like this, like they did today, I wouldn't put it past them to lose against either of those teams. And that's going to be a really make or break series because the winner of that series is going to be the last North American representative at Worlds. So that's going to be a really important series, whether it's 100 Thieves or Dig to face off against Cloud9. I think that Cloud9 really has to uh, take a look in the mirror and see what they're trying to do inside of the game because they played like crap in terms of macro, in terms of team play. They just got completely outplayed by FlyQuest. Um, and they, they should really be ashamed of themselves. I think their coaching staff as well, in terms of whoever's doing their drafting, should be completely ashamed. Uh, complete lack of diversity, complete lack of adaptation in the drafting phase. Like I said, four straight games of Cassante, four straight games of Corky, three out of four games on Lilia. You know, why not, why not play a brand pick for Blabber? Why not play a Karthus pick, a Fiddlesticks pick? Uh, you could put him on something uh, like the Lee Sin and try to have him hard carry a game and be really aggressive like he used to be. Uh, put Jojo on something like the Azir. Uh, put Thanatos on an Orn or maybe a hard carry champion like Fiora or Gwen that can outscale the Renekton in side lane really well. Instead, you kind of just stick, stick Thanatos on Cassante and say, here, do something. And I feel bad for Thanatos because, honestly, I feel like he played okay, but he's stuck on a, on a useless champion that can't play the game into most of these FlyQuest comps, and he's just kind of stuck and can't do anything. Um, along with Jojo Pune and Vulcan kind of inting, and Berserker not having a lot of agency with his role, uh, it just looked miserable for Cloud9. And that's pretty much that. So FlyQuest is going to be moving on after a really nice performance today to face Team Liquid next weekend uh, for a spot in the Grand Finals. And that's going to be a really, really fun series. Obviously, Team Liquid's going to be favored in that one. But FlyQuest looked really good today, much better than they did in the regular season, I will say. And Cloud9 is going to be looking to bounce back uh, against either 100 Thieves or Dignitas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.